OK, so you're still sticking to the story that you have amnesia? I do. I did. I did. From when to when? From a holiday in June 2000 till about mid-2003. OK, so just after all the money was paid out? Yes. Right. That's lucky. And, and, and I'd like to add that that money was claimed in good faith by Anne. They can't claim that back, I'm afraid. Those are their own rules. And so you, you don't remember anything about what happened on the day you went missing? Absolutely not. But you do remember that you definitely didn't plot to fake your own death for financial gain. No comment. It's very simple. We stick her in one room, stick him in another, and we play them off. Which means any answers you give us, we'll be checking with her to see if they tally up and vice versa. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. Although, do bear in mind that Anne does not have a very sophisticated grasp of financial matters. Right. Just the one brain cell, you see. Your wife, 34 years. Tell me about it. I turned up after they'd been paid out. I thought you said you couldn't remember when you turned up. The specific month, I said. But you can specifically remember that it was after the claim was settled? Yes. Uh -huh. Which month was the claim settled, then? Ah, nice try. I don't remember. This isn't the yes-no game, John. Your wife has already told us that you never had amnesia. She's mistaken. Perhaps she's forgotten. Turned up after they'd been paid out. I thought you said you couldn't remember when you turned up. The specific month, I said. But you can specifically remember that it was after the claim was settled? Yes. Uh -huh. Which month was the claim settled, then? Ah, nice try. I don't remember. This isn't the yes-no game, John. Your wife has already told us that you never had amnesia. She's mistaken. Perhaps she's forgotten. How's that plan going? Well, I'm here, aren't I? I'm not with you. Why else do you think I returned? I don't know. Why did you? To pay the money back. Oh, so you've made contact with the insurance companies then? Well, I would have if you hadn't arrested me. Huh? So it's, it's our fault. We spoiled your plan. You and the press. Oh, well, apologies. Accepted. Can I just ask, though, John, if your plan was to sell all your properties with the intention of paying the money back when you got straight. Why did you move to Panama? No comment. And buy a flat there? No comment. And a plot of land? No comment. Life insurance policies that you took out just three months before you went missing, is that date relevant, John? But you tell me. No. You tell me, that's how this works. Is that date relevant? No. No? So it's pure coincidence that you took out a life insurance policy in December 2001, which then allowed your wife to make a very large claim just 12 weeks later? Yes. And is it also a coincidence that on a computer hard drive taken from your house soon after your disappearance, we've since found a downloaded file titled Missing Persons and Police Investigations? One of the boys must have downloaded that. Yeah, it, it was dated a month before you went missing, John. Fair play. That's a tricky one. Except this fella has a beard. I presume you can grow a beard? Yes. OK, so is that you, but with a beard? Maybe. John, I'm just asking if you can identify yourself. No, come on. OK, oh... Perhaps you can read two things out for me, then. The date it was issued and the address. 22nd of April, 2002. Address number four, the cliff, Seaton Carew. OK. So just four weeks after you went missing, a man who looked very much like you, up, oh, yeah, with a beard, yeah, applies for a library card and gives your home address. But this man's called John Jones. Oh. 
okay. Yes. I faked it all. <laughs>